afternoon. Can we gather as much as possible? I know the sun is warm, but uh, it warms us of God's warmth. Some of you are. Welcome to this memorial service committal for Addie Forsyth. Uh, not the way we wanted to gather. Um, we wanted to be at church, but uh, on Monday that all changed. And thank you for being here as we celebrate her life together. Uh, the life that she now has uh, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, Pastor Hess and I will be conducting the service. Andy, are you ready? Um, our first hymn is going to be Be Still My Soul. And I think many of you know that, and we're thankful for a guitarist that can help us. Um, we'll sing two verses of that. Uh, later we'll be doing Lift High the Cross. We'll be doing only one verse and then a verse at the end. So. Be still my soul. My soul, the Lord is on my side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or shame. Leave to your God to order and provide. say those or sing those last two lines of the fourth stanza be still my soul that really does set a tone for us today be still my soul when change and tears are past maybe we're in the midst of tears uh, the loss of of Addie but we know that uh, she really is in the presence of the Lord and so the tears that we shed are be even become pastime tears tears of the past uh, her tears that that she even endured and went through in her life are now past and now there's the joy and for all of us to know that as the last line says all safe and blessed we shall meet at last what, hope, what great future we have for those of us in Jesus Christ to see our loved ones again let's pray Lord we thank you for this awesome day to to remember Addie and her victory that she has through your cross and resurrection just nurture our souls and our hearts and and as we remember, we are also being fed by your powerful word that brings your promises to guide us in our lives. The inspiration that we receive from this, this wonderful woman of faith, may it reside deep in our hearts and be lived out through our lives as we follow you, our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make flat the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our Lord. Job 19, 23 through 27. Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in a rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Romans 8, verses 28 and then 31 through 39. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What, then, shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring us any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Jesus Christ, who died, more than that, who is raised to life, and is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, famine or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. we're going to hear this gospel lesson from John 11 and I can just imagine Addie just saying right on <laughs> yes in fact one of the characteristics of, of Addie that I really enjoyed was that she was she was kind of like a little football coach <laughs> I, I can envision her with a little clipboard with the headset and moving up and down the sideline and just saying go for it do it you can do it I can imagine what some of her halftime talks would be like. Uh, we're probably the recipient of, of some of those. <laughs> uh, but, but uh, you know, she's with the Lord. She's she's seeing this resurrected Lord face to face now. Let's hear from, this, from the Gospel of John. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. 
But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. The Gospel for today. And at this time, we're going to listen to words of her nephew, Doug Otto. Uh, I'm going to try to read it off this tablet in this bright sun. Doug's words were really appropriate. Here we go. Addie didn't take no for an answer. Growing up, I always remembered Addie's white 1965 Plymouth Valiant. The car wasn't flashy, but it was pristine. Most of the time she had the car, her commute was less than one mile. <laughs> After John passed, Addie didn't need two cars anymore, so she decided to get rid of the Valiant in favor of John's giant silver Monte Carlo. It was 1982 and I was 17 years old. Natty decided I should have her car since both David and Diane already had their own. The car was almost perfect with only 15,000 miles on the odometer. It hadn't even been on a freeway. <laughs> I was beyond excited about it. Dad was not. <laughs> If he doesn't work for the car, oh wait, I've got to get my Jim Otto voice here. If he doesn't work for the car, he'll never appreciate it. He was wrong about that, by the way. Even with Addie's somewhat legendary persistence, Dad refused to budge. I sulked, Addie planned. She couldn't give me the car, but she could make sure I had the means to buy my own. At the time, there was a Shell station on the corner of Marconi and Eastern Avenue. Jerry, the owner, had always taken care of and loved the Valiant. He begged Addie to let him buy it, and unable to gift the car to me, Addie relented. What we didn't know was the deal had conditions. Addie called me for a ride from the station after delivering the car. When I arrived, Jerry offered me a job and told me to report back in an hour to start my first shift. <laughs> a few months later, Jerry sold the station, but I stayed on with the new owner, who eventually encouraged me to take a leap of faith on a new career. When anyone asks how I ended up being so successful working in technology, I tell them this story. I had a trip planned last May. I was going to spend a couple of days with Vaughn, most of a week in Yosemite, helping teach a photography workshop, and then stay to spend Mother's Day with my mother and godmother. The world changed, and the trip and travel canceled. The written history of this pandemic will include death tolls, infection rates, economic disaster, division, and such, but it won't give a mention to the worst part, not being able to see and be with someone so incredibly dear to you during their last days. While filled with overwhelming gratitude that God allowed Addie to spend those final days with family and ended the pain she endured with such beauty and grace, I'd give just about anything to hear her say, Ooh, Douglas. <laughs> it's typed out that way. <laughs> okay. I'd love to hear that one more time. I was very blessed as a child. We hear about kids forced to grow up without mothers, but I had two. Godspeed, Eddie. You know, sing um, Lift High the Cross, we'll be singing just verse one. Verse one. Just verse one.
Just a few final words. All three of those lessons that we heard are as a certain person that you've heard about the last three months have used the word, and one person in our society used the word foundational. Some of you may catch on who that is. If you don't know, it's our governor. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to say these words today are foundational to Addie's life. And that's why we're standing here in the sun, warm as it is, outside to give thanks to God for her life and her witness and her foundational faith that said all of these things that can ask the question as we look at a casket it says what shall we say to this and the answer is what Addie would say I am convinced persuaded that nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord and even through all of the pain that she went through in the last months and few years not complaining but always encouraging others, always trying to plan a party. In fact, when Arj and I talked, I said, can I refer to her as the party girl? <laughs> yeah. And she said, yes. <laughs> but she's enjoying the greatest party that anyone can ever have right now. No more tears, no more sighing, no more crying but living in the presence of our Lord. And that's what we celebrate today. That's what we are called to really believe in spite of anything else that goes on around us. And Paul said it well. He said all of these things are there and they're Satan's work to try to persuade us differently. But this is what we believe. This is what she believed and this is why we can celebrate today this super grandma encourager person who just enjoyed life and wanted all around her to enjoy life and so as you remember her you'll remember these things you won't remember this the casket you will remember her life and that's for us to say, thanks be to God. Amen. Just a note that our last verse will be at the end, after the committal, will be verse 4 that was there uh, printed before the sermon. So we pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. And grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life. And that through the grave and the gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. And grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. And grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love courage and faith to those who are bereaved that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love and help us we pray in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection to life everlasting and so, Lord, grant us grace to entrust Addie, entrust Addie to your never-failing love, 
which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We now join together in praying the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Ensure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our sister Addie Forsyth, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope to the resurrection of eternal life. Now may the Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord look upon her with favor and grant her his peace. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with us all. Amen. We join in verse 4 of Lift High the Cross.